And uh, instead of forming a charity where we only perhaps touch specific lives, I said, what would be better than giving people a longer, healthier, better quality of life, or at least try to? So that's where Plantex came from, and uh, things are just phenomenal. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi, and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. It's Rick Nusky here. I'm your host, and I am so very lucky to have on the line with me, Mr. Sean Dollinger. Welcome to the show, Sean. Thanks for having us on, Rick. Now, Sean is the uh, founder of a company called Plantex, and we're going to take a very deep dive into many of the, I guess, the nuts and bolts of this uh, publicly listed organization. But before we do that, Sean, it's traditional uh, for us to... Um, talk a little bit about the people behind the business because we know business is business but I think it's important to learn a little bit more about I guess the the people who are running the show. I was wondering if we could start off by um, sharing a a little bit about yourself with uh, the My Future Business audience. Absolutely. Grew up loving baseball. Got a baseball scholarship and went to the States. Not too many Canadians get that opportunity so that was a lot of uh, of fun. And then um, you know had when I got back from college, had the first kind of pickup and delivery company, which believe it or not, this was going back 22 years ago when smartphones weren't even around. And today we would call it something like Uber Eats, uh-huh. you know, something yep. along those lines. So, <laughs> you know, that was a, a pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. But then when I got the taste of e-commerce um, where I didn't need to hustle and run around um, to feel every cent that you make money when you're sleeping, I was absolutely hooked. And uh, it's been 20 years of uh, specialty e-com for myself, my last company, going from $6 million to $1.2 billion in a year and a half from a share price that came out at $0.06 cents and went as high as $4.40. Yes. So yes. love love the public markets. It's a lot of fun. It's been an incredible story of the rise and rise of uh, your successes along with Plantex and I've uh, taken a very close look at all of the the investor site content, your main Plantex websites, all very exciting. There's some great stuff on there. Um, You're stuck in Whistler at the moment, is that that correct? Yeah, that's why I got this hat and this jacket on. It hasn't stopped snowing in about three days. (laughs) Oh, it could be. Uh, could be worse places to get stuck, I'm pretty sure of that. But um, um, in terms of uh, living an active lifestyle, I know that you're a vegan. Um, and, um, you know, I'd just love to talk about your, I guess, your fitness regime before we start talking about the mechanics of business and what you think, how important um, looking after yourself is, uh, especially nowadays with all, all of the fast foods and the marketing that are bombarding us with these different, uh, I guess, fast food options. What's your take on that? Yeah, absolutely, Rick. And uh, we re- we love that Plantex to refer to as a plant-based lifestyle. And the reason we do that is we want it to be warm and welcoming. I can't tell you during my journey, uh, you know, I've I suffered like what I weigh today. I didn't weigh since uh, since I was 12 years old. You know, just to put it in perspective. So I've struggled my whole life with weight, with uh, being heavy, and then that led to anxiety. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, at 5'8", I weighed 220 pounds most of my life. And then wow. in the last 10 years, I've been on this journey of a plant-based lifestyle, active routine. And what I always found while I was going through this this movement was everybody always like questioning, like, what do you mean you have a plant-based lifestyle? That's impossible. You can't get full from it. Uh, you don't feel well. You don't get enough protein. And, you know, that that is what we were trained to think. You know, I'm in the gym five days a week, lifting heavy uh, with a trainer pushing me. I then go and do 10 miles on my Peloton bike, walk countless miles while I do (laughs) calls and everything during the day, you know. So and, and, you know, here I am mid afternoon and, and I feel great and ready to go work out more and keep working. So, you know, I love this whole thing about education. And we see it from the biggest companies in the world, like Apple, who took uh, took market share away from Microsoft when they were the dominant 
uh, home computing software, right? And that's what we try to do at Plantex, very welcoming. You want to try living a plant-based lifestyle just for a, a lunch, a dinner, a week, whatever you want, we're here for you. And that's really what our whole belief is over here. Yeah, thank you for sharing, um, Sean. It's very important to give some context for everybody who's on the call for us today. Um, now, I know that you are super busy. Um, so uh, you started Plantex or, or founded the idea of Plantex in late 18, 2019. Is that, would that be fair? Is that right? No, actually, it's pretty incredible. The idea came to me in December of 2019, so pre-COVID, yep. pre the plant-based lifestyle getting super hot. It, I was... Yeah, I, I had left my previous company that I founded in February of 2019, did a bunch of consulting work. Then there I am in December, really uh, chomping at the bit to start another specialty e-com. Kept thinking, how, how do I give back? I've had really successful runs, made a lot of people a lot of money as well, mm -hmm. but never felt like fully satisfied. And uh, instead of forming a charity where, where we only perhaps touch specific lives, um, I said, what would be better than giving people a longer, healthier, better quality of life, or at least try to? Um, so that's where Plantex came from. And the website actually only went live in April. Uh, we went public in, in August. And even uh, just going public in August, we've already managed to do a few acquisitions. We now have the leading subscription plant, plant company in the UK. And uh, things are just phenomenal. I'd love to talk about mergers and acquisitions and exit strategies later on in the call where it sort of sits better. Um, but for now, um, going back to my initial, I guess, angle, um, how important do you think it is for you, given that you're so busy, to have time away to recharge your, your batteries, as it were? I don't think I've had a vacation or a sick day in 20 years, Rick, to be <laughs> honest. Um, I call it almost like how you need to live plant-based lifestyle and same thing with workout regimes. You, it, it's got to be part of your lifestyle. Uh -huh. Work for me is, is that. And I was actually watching Elon Musk's, uh, he's on uh, YouTube, um, speaking about making sure every hour of your day is used properly, and especially when you get going in a business. And I, I, I work probably 80 to 100 hours a week, but it's, I love it. It's part of my life from when I wake up in the morning to the second I go to sleep, which takes me literally seconds. Um, it's, it's all about how do we keep getting this company to the next level? How do we keep putting the pieces of the puzzle together to make a masterpiece? And that's really what we're after. So uh, I consider every day just lucky and don't need that defined break. Yeah. I just find every day so much fun and incredible. That is a refreshing take on, a, I guess, a very traditional perspective, isn't it? You know, we have to take a break. And we have to work a certain amount of hours and there's got to be this, you know, quote unquote, work-life balance. It, it's, it's quite, it's very much the myth, isn't it? It is. And some people say, oh, well, what do you mean you haven't taken a, a break or anything? And the lucky part about even during COVID, I've, I've traveled 50 plus flights made the most of it, had to take precautions, mask. I, I've said that I believe travel could even be safer now, right? Before there were tons of people circulating around the globe. The cleanliness wasn't there. You go on an airplane now, it's unbelievable. Every second seat is empty uh, for safety measures. Uh, the, the airlines have put in incredible protocols. I think they've done a wonderful job, you, you know? So I've, I've gotten that opportunity due to the way that my schedule and everything is and also shareholders and investors invested in us and i don't think it'd be fair for me to sit on the sidelines uh, when when there's still things going on so definitely safety comes first but at the same time we've got to keep things going because we never get back this time yeah that's uh, some sage advice there you know you can you can uh, do certain things, but you certainly can't get back more time. Now, I, I know that uh, as the founder, you're not uh, executive, uh, like a CEO or anything like that. You have a, a team of people behind you there. Um, um, 
can we share a little bit about, I guess, the, the management structure? I know you talk about this in, in other interviews, but again, just extending on your own relationships with them, because you talk about community a lot. Um, how, how interactive is your management team and your board um, with your shareholders? Is there any sort of interaction between the two? Absolutely. So I believe in communication. My stock in 2017 at the time was one of the most traded stocks in Canada with uh, over 1.7 billion shares traded. And um, that just came from having a connection with our retail investors, getting out there, doing shows like yours. We actually have our own vodcast every Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to put a press release out there, but it's really nice to be able to meet the people behind the press releases, get them on camera. And this time for my 20 years plus of experience, instead of hiring individuals, what we've done is we hire groups now. So um, for example, for our social media, instead of hiring someone and then perhaps they take time off or something comes up, we hired an agency called, for example, Toast Media. Yeah. And they're phenomenal. They're a great company. They're experts in social media. And that's how we've now built out our team. So, yeah, we've decided to use groups instead of um, individuals, and it's worked out phenomenal for us, and that's what we've done. We've stacked together different groups who are experts in what they do to leap us ahead, and that's essentially uh, how we've been able to grow this company from a, from a startup in December to a website in April to currently having a market cap of over $100 million dollars. Yeah, that's incredible. Now, in that very short amount of time, I've uh, I've seen all of the content and all of the success stories that are related to Plant X. And I have to say, although it's only a small thing, it's a vitally important thing to have a very snappy uh, website that's responsive and it does all of the right things every time. And it's a it's a credit to to your team how wonderful, how beautiful, and how easy it flows to go through that experience on that site. Um, but putting that uh, to the side. Um, you also talked about education. I want to go back to this because, you know, you talk about this in terms of um, the foods that we consume, the lifestyles that we live. What is your responsibility as Plant X to people that can, uh, who want to get involved as investors and those who are actually consuming the products that you promote? Yeah, absolutely. So back to what I said a little earlier, we're a technology company, mm -hmm. we're an e-com, mm -hmm. that's what we do at the end of the day. But if you look at some of the most valuable companies in the world being Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, guess what? They all have stores for education purposes. Amazon went ahead, they bought Whole Foods for more distribution, same day delivery. That's what we believe in at the end of the day. We, we form these education centers, create an experience around that. And who's Sean Dollander? I'm not a doctor. I, I, <laughs> I know e-com really, really well. We don't have doctors on our team. So what we did was our CMO, Alexandra Hoffman, came up with a phenomenal idea about going out there and forming a medical advisory board. And with that, we got the head cardiologist uh, from Stanford University. Uh, we also got head of nutrition from uh, Stanford. We have one of the leading autoimmune doctors in BC, Paul Gross, and the list goes on. And they, these people that I'm naming, you could join any medical advisory team in the world, and they get hired a lot by pharmaceutical companies and different companies out there. And they chose to come and be part of this movement at Plantex because they see what we're trying to do. So with that team, we're then able to go ahead and bring more uh, real content to people rather than us just stating things. I think it's important to, um, I guess, break down uh, a little bit more how the process of Plant X works, not only from a supplier's perspective who wants to create a relationship with Plant X, but also, uh, I guess, the investor side and the consumer side. Can you talk us a little bit through, I guess, the relationship and the process behind um, bringing on people to your e-com uh, platform? Well, this is the beauty about us, and I explain this to a lot of people out there who are either looking to invest or anything like that. We're, we're not a brand. brand. The brand war is very, very hard to win. Obviously, when you win it, you have the holy grail, right? Yeah. But even if at one point you had the hottest almond milk out there, guess what? Now oat milk is the hot thing, right? <laughs> yep. So how, how do you, what happens if your oat milk isn't the best out there? You've lost. For every very good butcher... Uh, there's 99 plus other companies that 
have failed, you know? So we love being the platform in a, in a movement like the plant-based space. When there's new products, we literally get hundreds of inquiries a month from new cheeses to new snacks, to new alternative meats, to, to new milk alternatives. Now somebody contacted us with uh, macadamia milk, or um, you know, cashew milk, like it's unbelievable, pistachio milk, all these new things. I love being the platform because once we have that consumer base coming and shopping and trying products out, they're coming back to us to see all the new products that exist and what else is out there. It's a wonderful thing to be in that space where you take care of the technology that brings, it acts like the, I guess the hub for all of these external suppliers, and it's uh, it's it's a wonderful experience for them, I'm sure, because you've made it seamless. Now, I always think about quality assurance. I think about uh, you know a, a product supplier. They've come to your platform. They're still responsible for maintaining, uh, I guess, process control over their products. What what part do you play in that? Is there any part that you're responsible for in terms of, I guess, if you receive. Um, a customer feedback that they weren't happy with something or they were ecstatic with something. What, do you have an involvement in that side of the, the experience? So a few things, and uh, I think I've been eating more than I have in the past because any new product that uh, goes on the website, I give it a try. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily eat the whole thing, but I try to make sure it's edible. And I'd say <laughs> it's about a 50-50 uh, running ratio right now on things that actually get accepted to the website. So uh, we do that. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Once it's up there, obviously, we make sure these companies have insurance. And if they've got insurance, we believe they've taken the necessary steps from a safety standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, our platform allows for real feedback. So that's one thing. You go to a grocery store, and it's a little bit of an old school system because you walk around, you look at the shelf, whichever company paid more money to have better placement. You sometimes grab that first, and you don't really have live feedback. In the educated, sorry, in the education centers that we have, as well as our website, in real time, you'll be able to get real feedback from real people who are trying either plant-based living, or you know just want to give their feedback. It's all neutral. There's no selection from us. It's totally unbiased. Yeah, thank you for that feedback, Sean. This is a wonderful call. I've, I've learned so much in such a short amount of time. Now, I'm looking at um, plantx.com. I'm looking at um, under your recipes um, tab, you've got shop, meal delivery, indoor plants, recipes and gifts. There's a lot going on there. What What is the core of the business here? Is it all of those things? Or is, where should the focus be for, I guess, the general person that gets involved with this as yeah, a, we're con the, as a know, consumer? Or your one-stop shop for everything plant-based. So right. somebody said it best to me when we acquired uh, Bloombox UK. And by the way, back in April, if you told me we'd be purchasing one of the leading uh, plant subscription companies in the world, oh, yeah. I'd say that there's no way. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. And then all of a sudden, uh, they said it best. They said they put the plant in Plantex. And I love that. So... Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, Katie Cooper who comes, uh, you know, from an incredible background of being a psychologist and speaks. I never thought about plants being like cleaning the air in your home and helping you from a psychology perspective ah, and all yes. these things. It's pretty incredible what I've learned. And pre-COVID, they were only doing about $3 million. Post-COVID, $8 million. Next year, a run rate of $20 million. Like, it's phenomenal unbelievable how uh, how plant sales have absolutely taken off people want to take better care of themselves they want to give themselves a warmer place to work and all these great things uh, you touched on COVID, and i'd like to go back to that in terms of meal delivery we notice uh, where we are that there's a lot more stay at home you know non-contact pickup this is this is just you've you're right on time with this that was just fortuitous how i guess there's some silver lining in such a, a horrible uh, global um, pandemic, isn't there, in terms of you having the opportunity to provide plantex based products um, through your meal delivery service. How does that actually work? So we teamed up with a company called Up Meals. Once again, Sean's not a cook and <laughs> nobody on our team, and we didn't want a huge capex into a kitchen or anything mm -hmm. of that nature. So we teamed up with a company called Up Meals, and then we collaborate with great chefs, great restaurants all around the world. 
And then that company in Vancouver, BC prepares the meals and then we go ahead and ship them out across Canada for now. We'll then be doing that throughout the US starting in Q1 of 2021 and in Israel in Q2 of 2021. So we're super excited. Yeah, you're getting some traction, I suspect. Hopefully, my hope is that uh, you'll go global with this at some point in time. Now, anybody who uh, visits the the website, definitely take a look around. There's lots to see there, lots to uh, get involved with. Now, Sean, if we could, I'd like to, um, I guess, go over to the investor side of the story. I know that you have, and I'm just looking at it here, investor.plantx.com. Um, where people can send you inquiries about getting involved with Plantech as an investor. Um, but there's a couple of questions that I'm, I'm sure that people will have. Um, I guess if I'm uh, as green as the grass is long, as it were, and I knew nothing about investing, but I felt good about Plantex, what are some of the things that you will tell that investor, that prospective investor, when they come and ask you questions? So somebody said it best to me. They said, Sean, are you kind of like the ETF of the plant-based space? And if your viewers or investors don't know what an ETF is, it's where a stock is created that captures a category. And obviously, because the plant-based space is so new, uh, there hasn't been one of these basket stocks created yet. Mm -hmm. So if somebody believes in this whole plant-based movement as much as I do, I don't think it's going anywhere. It's not like these other things that have come and fact. gone. No, it's not. And, um, you know, it's a great way to invest in a space that you believe will keep going up rather than choosing a specific brand. Because for now, uh, the publicly traded companies that are out there are, are just brand specific. Mm -hmm. So that's how I like saying it. And I, I, I paint this picture sometimes It's kind of like a casino. If there's five casinos on a block, you want the person to enter into your casino and then it doesn't matter if they play blackjack, roulette, or poker. Same thing for us when you were speaking about the verticals earlier. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter to us if somebody buys plants, meals, groceries. We just want them to have a great experience, and we capture 35 to 55% gross margin off all of those purchases. Fantastic. I just want to help educate people, uh, Sean. Um, can you tell us what are your tickers? I think Vega is one of them. Yes, Vega, V-E-G-A, on the Canadian Stock Exchange, on mm -hmm. the CSE. And then in, um, in Frankfurt, it's WNT.1. Um, and then uh, we do trade in uh, the U.S. on the OTCQB um, under uh, PLXTF. I'm going to have to open up my international trading account, and put some money down on this one. I'm thinking, Sean. Now, uh, in terms of um, our, the experience for an investor, I'm going to want to know um, how long are you going to be around? Do you have an exit strategy? And um, importantly, how are you marketing to make sure that I get a return on, on my investment? Could you t share a little bit about that side of the story with us? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as I mentioned, we have a vodcast every Saturday where we connect with our shareholders. I don't believe there's any other companies that do anything like that live. So your viewers could join our YouTube channel, the Plantex YouTube channel and see that they could ask questions live. We get it very interactive. That's a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, more importantly, back to your question, mm -hmm. we just completed an eleven and a half million dollar raise. After all expenses have been paid, everything's been paid, we still have over $7 million in the bank. Our burn rate is roughly $100,000 a month currently. So if you start the math, you'll see that our company is not going anywhere uh, in the short term, most definitely. And that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's not an easy thing to say for small cap companies. Yeah. And then on top of that, um, with, the, with that all in place, we also have a, a massive growth. We have revenue, uh, which a lot of companies can't say they have revenue. Uh, so that's another massive thing. And we have absolutely no debt whatsoever in our company. So, you know, when I look, I invest in a lot of different companies out there. My first question always is, is there revenue? We check that box here. Uh, number two, uh, what's the management team like, which you touched on? Mm -hmm. And then um, number three, did they have money in the bank to survive? And I believe we check all of those boxes from a from a safety perspective. Yeah, I've seen a lot of uh, of these sorts of organisations. Nothing like yours, I must admit. Come and go, and you know you've ticked all the boxes. It's just a wonderful credit to you and all of the work that your team are doing. And um, 
as we've touched on, there are a number of uh, websites that people can find you, and I'm just going to run through them if you don't mind, um, uh, Sean. One is PlantX, that's P-L-A-N-T-X dot com. And then if you go over to investor.plantx.com, you can leave a message, get in contact with Sean and ask the questions. Make sure you do ask the questions, get as much information as you possibly can about this wonderful opportunity. And with all that being said, Sean, you've been such a wonderful guest and it's been a great opportunity to spend some time with you on the My Future Business Show today. Hey, thanks so much for having us on. Until next time, stay curious, stay planted, stay healthy. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends, and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.